This chapter 1 consists of two subtopics 1.1 arithmetic operations with algebraic fractions, 1.2 improper fractions. So basically, if you look at the past papers, you will understand that there are only two types of questions here you can expect from this uh, chapter 1. So I have my textbook here on the consolidated paper where I have put all the questions from chapter 1 here. I have consolidated all these questions. If you look at all these questions, you will understand. We are going to go through these questions anyway. So you will understand you can expect only two types of questions from this chapter. Mostly in May, June and October series. Mostly I would say in May, June series, they don't, for some reason, they don't take questions from this chapter. I don't know why the Pearson is doing that. If you look at it, you see I'm going to scroll down. After specimen paper, you have January 2020, June, January 2021, the October 2020 is the same as June. That's a Corona time, so it's the same paper. Then question 4, January 2021, June 2021, October 21. And after that, January 2022 and in May, June 2022, there was not even a single question taken from this chapter. And then after October 2022, Jan 2023, in May and October 2023 also, there wasn't even a single question taken from this chapter. This is the most recent paper. So I'm, uh, I'm just uh, sorry to say this, the chances are you are not going to get a question in this chapter. But if you get a question, be thankful this is one of the easiest chapter here. So you can get a minimum of three marks, minimum of three marks. It can go up to not six marks. This one integration also involved here. Here you see integration is also involved. So you won't get six marks actually, minimum three marks or uh, if you just scroll down you'll get four, it can go up to four marks actually. So minimum of three marks, maximum of four marks you will get from this chapter and chances are you are not going to get a single question also in this May June series. So let the fingers cross and then we'll jump into this chapter one now. So we are going to be looking at the first topic algebraic operations with algebraic arithmetic operations with algebraic fractions. That's our chap subtopic one. So in the subtopic one, I'm going to straight away go to the exercise because there's nothing much to discuss here in example one and two. In exercise one a, you see question number one two. Question number one, two, three, all these are, I would say like, it's like an uh, extended version of whole level algebraic fraction, fraction. You just have to simplify the, you, ha you have to factorize the quadratic expression and cancel out with the numerator. So this type of questions. So one, two, three, I would say it's not really important. And then uh, this question number four is also like the same actually. You just need to change the multiplication, division to multiplication and uh, flip this, uh, uh, flip these two uh, uh, fractions and then simplify it. I would suggest you to go through these questions. These are all O level questions. But if you go to the next exercise, Question number one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, just a normal uh, questions, O level math again. But question number four is important. So I would suggest you not because it's exam style question. Of course, you need to go through all the exam style questions. But still, this question number four is uh, important. And then uh, if you scroll down, you can see question number six and seven. So if you want to practice any questions, I would suggest you to practice question number four. Question number four, five, six and seven from this chapter. The reason I say this, not because uh, these questions are exam style questions, but even if you look at the past paper, 
you see uh, i'm going to start from the specimen paper specimen paper look at this one they want you to combine these two algebraic fractions and write it as a single fraction like this they want you to write this as a single fraction in this form okay so you have to read the question carefully word by word what what do they mention and what do they say about abc they say abc are just constants so you need to pay attention to that sometimes they say abc abc are integers in that case if you get a fraction you should know that you are doing it wrong so you just need to combine this algebraic fractions so you have 7 over x plus 3 factorize the second denominator second uh, fraction the denominator when you factorize it you will get x plus 4 times x plus 3 to make it as a common denominator multiply the first one by x plus 4 divided by x plus 4 so you got a common denominator so put it as a common denominator x plus 4 times x plus 3 and then simplify everything in the numerator so once you simplify you will understand uh, when you simplify 7x minus 5x you are going to get 2x and then 7 fourths are 28 minus 22 you get 6 so you take 2 as a common factor out from the numerator it's basically 2 times x plus 3 so x plus 3 will be cancelled you will get 2 over x plus 4 that's what they want okay this is how you simplify it it's basically merging the given algebraic fractions into a single fraction. There are few more questions in the past paper. This is just a specimen paper. And uh, you go here. January 2021, you got a seven mark question here. See, again, you have to merge them into a single, alge single algebraic fraction okay so you make it as a common denominator and merge them in this is the first type of question you can expect if they ever take questions from chapter one this is the first type of question you can expect and then uh, this is this is also combining to uh, a single single fraction and then uh, this also the most recent paper also the same they want you to combine these two fractions into a single fraction okay so it's going to be minimum of three mark question so you can expect this type of question so that's the reason i ask you to uh, practice these questions question number four five six seven from this exercise exercise one b in exercise one a you don't really have some very important questions in exercise 1a so that's all in exercise the first subtopic i'm going to move on to second subtopic so let's look at chapter uh, the subtopic 1.2 improper fractions now in improper fractions in chapter uh, 1 chapter 2 in p4 you are going to learn this improper fraction in detail actually because if you get a fraction in uh, in your exam right you have to basically check whether it's proper or improper fraction you have to check actually but it's not needed in uh, p3 uh, in this chapter because mostly if you look at this question you see you don't need to know whether the given fraction is proper or improper fraction all you need to know is you need to write this fraction in this form so usually you will be given this actually but when you learn a p4 chapter 1 chapter 2 uh, partial fractions where you need to check the uh, fraction whether it's proper or improper here you don't need to do that because you'll be given the required form you just need to equate these two and find a b c okay so that's all in this uh, improper fraction nothing else actually so this is the second type of question you can expect this one like this so if you go to the exercise now there is a similar pattern questions here in example four and five six also 
So if you go to exercise 1c, I would suggest you to practice all these exam style questions here because they can really construct some questions here in the same model. So to, to, to get full score from this chapter, I would suggest you to practice all these exam style questions from this exercise 1c. In particular, I wanted to discuss one question here. You see, look at this question. Question number 10. When they say fully factorize x power 4 minus 1, you have to write x power 4 as x square whole square minus 1 can be written as 1 square whole square also. The reason why I am writing this, it looks like if you take this as a, you have a square minus b square and there is an identity for, algebraic identity for a square minus b square. It can be written as a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, it's going to be x square plus 1 times x square minus 1 because x square is a. 1 square or 1 is b. So keep x square plus 1 as it is. You can apply the identity here also for x square minus 1. You can write it as x plus 1 times x minus 1. That's how you fully factorize this expression. And in part b, hence otherwise, write this fraction in this form. So if you look at the fraction, the denominator is same as this. So instead of x power 4 minus 1, you use this result here. So you can cancel the denominator with this. You'll be left with x minus 1 times x square plus 1. That's what they want here. ax plus b plus cx square plus dx plus e. So the rest of the questions I would suggest you to practice because this is a second type of question you can expect here. For example, you see Jan 2020, a similar pattern question. June 2020, also the same. And then uh, this one, June 2021 is also the same. Let's see only this part. Though it's a six mark question involving integration, the first part is from chapter one. And then, and then 20, October 2021, a similar pattern question. June 2023, January 2023. And the most recent paper, they uh, have not asked uh, this question, this type of uh, question from second topic. It's like a question from a first topic. So the conclusion is mostly do not expect a question from chapter 1 in this May-June series, okay? So if you get a question, it's going to be a question from topic 2 actually. So if you want to score uh, full marks here, I would suggest you to practice all these exam style questions because every question is of different pattern here. So I would suggest you to practice all this question 1 to 9 here from this exercise. They are not really hard. That's a good news here. And then if you go to chapter review 1, these questions are normal questions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I would suggest you to skip this question 5. Uh, we can discuss this question in, in logarithms actually. So you need to know, you need to know logarithms to, uh, you should have finished chapter 5 to solve this actually. Okay. So if you are already finished chapter 5, I would suggest you to go this uh, question number 5, A and B. Otherwise, just skip that. After finishing chapter 5, you can come back here. And then writing this as a single fraction, all these exam style questions also. Not only that, I would suggest you to practice this challenge question also. This one. Go through this question also.
so basically that's all uh, that's all in chapter one even uh, if I go through the past paper questions I can't find really any tricky questions here because in chapter one is too easy they can't really take tricky questions from here so basically that's the end of this chapter one video if you want this consolidated chapter wise past papers I'll leave a link in the description below you can click that link and download the chapter wise past paper questions and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I would uh, suggest you to share this video to all your friends and classmates so that they can benefit from this video. Thank you.